In this video, we're going to talk about share dilution and stock buybacks. We're going to discuss the effects that these have on a company's EPS value or earnings per share, its dividend per share, and also its price to earnings ratio. Now, a share dilution event, is that good or bad for investors? Well, it really depends on what the company does with the capital that it raises. Sometimes it could expand its operation and increase earnings, which could be a good thing. If not, increase in the number of outstanding shares usually has a negative impact on the earnings per share. And this particular problem is going to illustrate that. So let's begin. Number one, company XYZ has 30 million shares outstanding and generated 120 million in earnings during the last quarter. The dividend payout ratio is currently 75% and the current share price is $48. Calculate the EPS and dividend per share for this company. At the same time, we'll also calculate the price to earnings ratio. So let's start with the EPS. Let me decrease the size of the font. So the EPS or the earnings per share is the net income or the earnings divided by the number of shares outstanding. So the company has a net income of 120 million. That's the earnings. And the number of shares outstanding is 30 million. 120 million divided by 30 million is four. So the company is earning $4 per share. So that's the EPS value. Now to calculate the dividend per share, we need to know how much money are they paying in dividends. And the dividend payout ratio is helpful to calculate that. So if the dividend payout ratio is 75%, that means that 75% of the earnings is distributed to shareholders in the form of dividends. The other 25% is retained by the company. So 75% of 120 million, that's 120 times 0.75. And that'll give you 90 million. So the dividend per share is going to be the total dividends paid by the company divided by the number of shares outstanding. So 90 million out of the 120 million will be shared to the stockholders in the form of dividends. And there's 30 million dividends, I mean, 30 million shares outstanding. So the dividend per share is going to be $3 per share. Now let's calculate the price to earnings ratio or the PE ratio. The price to earnings ratio is going to be the price of the stock divided by the EPS. So it's $40, I mean, it's $48 per share, and the earnings per share is currently $4. So the price to earnings ratio is going to be 48 divided by 4, or 12. Now let's move on to Part B. The company needs to raise capital and decides to sell 10 million shares to the public in a secondary offering. What will be the EPS and dividend per share after this offering is complete. Let's also calculate the PE ratio as well. So initially, the company had 30 million shares outstanding. After the secondary offering, the total number of shares outstanding will increase to 40 million. So first, let's calculate the EPS. So the earnings haven't changed. It's still 120 million. But the number of shares did change. It's 40 million. So 120 divided by 4, if you cancel the zeros, it's 12 over 4, which is 3. So that's the new earnings per share. So by increasing the number of shares outstanding, the EPS went down from 4 to 3, assuming that the earnings remain the same. Now let's calculate the dividend per share value or DPS. 
So the amount that the company is giving out in dividends is still 90 million. It's still 75% of the total earnings. So if we divide 90 by 40, the DPS value decreased as well. It went down from $3 to now $2.25. And now let's calculate the P.E. ratio. So it's going to be the price of the stock, which is $48, divided by the new EPS value, $3. So that gives us a P.E. ratio of 16. So the P.E. ratio went up as the shares outstanding increased. Now let's move on to Part C. So this time, the company makes effective use of the capital that they acquired for selling the 10 million shares. It says after selling the 10 million shares, company XYZ uses the acquired capital to expand its operations and buy other companies. As a result, the earnings generated for the next quarter have increased to 240 million. What is the new EPS and dividend per share? So this time, earnings went up. And this is a good thing. So the new EPS will be the new earnings of 240 million divided by the 40 million shares outstanding. So 24 divided by 4 is 6. So the EPS went up from $4 to $6 relative to Part A. Now let's move on to the next part, DPS. So assuming the same dividend payout ratio of 75%, the total dividends paid will increase from 90 million to 180 million. If you multiply 240 by 0.75, that'll give you 180 million. So the DPS value increased from $3 in Part A to 4.5 in Part C. And now finally, let's calculate the P.E. ratio, which is the price of the stock, that's $48, divided by the EPS of $6. 48 divided by 6 is 8. So that's the new P.E. ratio. Now let's summarize what's happening here in this problem. Let's see the effect of share dilution on EPS, DPS, and the P.E. ratio. So as we have seen, when a company sells more shares and increase the total shares outstanding, if the earnings remain the same, the EPS value goes down, the dividends paid per share goes down, but the P.E. ratio goes up. So this is not good for investors because they're earning less per share of stocks that they own, and they're receiving less in dividends. So that's the effect of share dilution on an investor's investment. Now sometimes, as we've seen in the case of Part C, a share dilution may not always be a bad thing. It could be a good thing. So if the shares go up, but if a company increases the earnings by a greater proportion than the increase of shares, then this could be a good thing. Then the EPS could go up, the DPS will go up as well, and the price to earnings ratio will go down, making the company more undervalued. So this is good for investors, and this is bad for investors. So a share dilution may be a good thing if the company can increase the earnings at a greater proportion than the increase in shares. If the earnings don't go up, and the company dilute its shares, that's bad for investors. Now let's move on to the next problem. Company ABC has 50 million shares outstanding and generated 500 million in earnings during the last quarter. The dividend payout ratio is 50% and the current share price is $40. Calculate the EPS, DPS, and PE ratio for this company. So let's start with the EPS. So the company has 500 million in earnings and 50 million shares outstanding. 
So if we cancel a 0, this is going to be 50 divided by 5, which is 10. So this company is earning $10 per share. Now let's calculate the DPS value, the dividends, the dividend per share value. So the dividend payout ratio is 50%. That means that half of the earnings will be paid out in the form of dividends. Half of 500 is 250. So the total dividends paid is 250 million, and that's going to be spread out over 50 million shares. So each investor will be receiving $5 in dividends per share, which is pretty nice, relative to a stock price of $40. Now, let's calculate the P.E. ratio. So the price to earnings ratio, that's going to be the price of the stock, which is $40, divided by the earnings per share of $10. So the P.E. ratio is very low, it's 4, which means that the company is undervalued. Now, let's look at the next part, part B. Company ABC has tons of cash and believes that its stock is currently undervalued. Therefore, it buys back 30 million shares from the marketplace. What is the new EPS, DPS, and PE ratio for this company? So initially, the company had 50 million shares outstanding in the marketplace. The company buys back 30 million shares. So now there's 20 million shares floating in the marketplace. So the new EPS value is going to be 500 million. The earnings is still the same divided by 20 million shares outstanding. So 500 divided by 20 is 25. So that's the new earnings per share value. Now the dividend per share is still going to be 250 million paid out in dividends. We're assuming that the earnings remain the same. But now we're going to divide this by 20 million. So the dividend per share will be $12.50. And now the P.E. ratio, that's going to be a price of $40 divided by the EPS of 25. And so that's 1.6. So notice the effect of a share buyback. Because the number of shares in the marketplace went down, the earnings per share went up. The dividend per share went up. The price to earnings went down, which makes the company more valuable. And also, supply and demand plays a role here. When a company undergoes share dilution, because there's more shares in the marketplace, the supply goes up. And when the supply goes up, typically the price goes down because there's less demand for the stock. But in this case, because the number of shares went down, the supply went down. And so there's more demand for the stock. And typically, a share buyback usually leads to an increase in share price whereas share dilution usually leads to a decrease in share price. In other words, a share buyback is usually a good thing for investors, unless the company is masking some type of problem. And on the other hand, a share dilution event is usually a bad thing for investors, unless the company can grow its earnings to a much greater proportion than the increase in shares. So that's basically it for this video. So now you understand the effect of share dilution and stock buybacks on the EPS, DPS, and PE ratio of a stock. Thanks for watching.